Hey guys, my name is Fernando. I'm one of the new partners to just join Seller Tradecraft. All the time I'm getting asked what's going on in the Amazon industry and so I wanted to share a little bit of what I've been seeing uh, which I feel like is a really interesting to share. So right now Amazon is incredibly, incredibly hot. I mean, it's definitely one of the industries to be in, especially in the, out of e-commerce. And basically I look at it as almost like a modern day gold rush. And you might ask why? But basically, Amazon has a massive customer base that's already trained to purchase. They've got all their credit cards and addresses already saved. And then what's even more is that Amazon is willing to ship the products from FBA to the customer directly for you. And on top of that, they're gonna manage a majority of the customer support. It's just an amazing time to be an Amazon entrepreneur. And so you might ask like, well, why is it a, a gold rush then? So the reason is, is there's companies out there right now, like Anchor, which is primarily selling on Amazon, and they're valued at over $1 billion. That's three commas. But it's not even just them. It's other companies that are selling for 40, 50, and even 75 million. And those are the, just the ones that I know about. And so it's an incredible time to be an Amazon entrepreneur. And then, so yeah, I wanted to share 15 of the most common mistakes that I see, you know, new and even experienced sellers making on the marketplace. And, you know, just a little spoiler out there, we've made a ton of them. Okay, so let's jump into it. So mistake number one is thinking that Amazon is too saturated. There's tons and tons, hundreds if not thousands of niches that you can jump into on amazon.com, which is in the US. But on top of that, there's so much opportunity in the growing marketplaces like Canada, UK, Germany, as well as they've just launched you know, Japan, Mexico, and Australia in the last few years. There's tons and tons of opportunity still left in Amazon. So number two, a mistake that I see is people kind of going after these products that are maybe generating 50 or 100K in revenue a month with like 1,000, 2,000 reviews. I mean, truthfully, like no one's gonna buy your product with like 20 reviews when there's someone else out there with like 1,000 reviews. It's gonna be super, super hard to convince people even if you have an original product. I mean, unless you have a big bankroll and you're willing to lose money for the first six months, I would go for way less saturated products, maybe no more than 150 reviews, because then, like, you know, it's reasonable for someone to buy your product that's a little bit different, you know, maybe better quality or new feature with only 20 reviews compared to that uh, one with 150. Mistake number three is honestly just trying to learn everything at once. So, a lot of you guys know I have like an amazing business partner, his name is Nick. And the cool thing is when we were starting out, we decided to kind of divide and conquer. So he's uh, much better at kind of the listings and the optimization. I'm much better at like, you know, product selection and kind of strategy. And so I see a ton of new sellers where they're kind of coming in and they're trying to master PPC and their launch strategies before they've even chosen a product. And it can get super well overwhelming and discouraging. And so I would really try to build it out in like more sequentially. So you focus on like product selection, then you go to sourcing, then you kind of start thinking about your, you know, your marketing inserts and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, eventually you start working on like kind of the launch and PPC strategies. Okay, so mistake number four is going after super, super low price points. Huge mistake because once you factor in your product cost, your FBA fees, referral fees, sponsor products, storage, giveaways, all that kind of stuff, you know, selling like an eight or ten dollar priced item is just not going to work very well. And even if it does in the beginning, you know, other competitors, especially the Chinese sellers, are going to come in. You're going to face margin compression and then you're gonna be stuck with tons of inventory. It's happened to quite a few of my friends. I really suggest trying to go above a $15 price point at the very, very minimum. So mistake number five, this is one of the most common ones that I see out there, but it's trying to build multiple businesses at the same time. And yeah, I'm talking about OA, RA, private label, merch, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's a huge distraction. Choose one line of business and really, really get good at that because 
you know, if you're trying to, you know, start doing wholesale while you're waiting for your merch designs from your graphic designer, while you're looking for, you know, your first private label product, you're not doing all of those as well. Like I mentioned earlier, it's like we kind of divided and conquered just in private label. And if you're trying to learn all three of these business models or five business models at the same time, there's just no way you're gonna be able to do them all really well. And so there's something called Pareto's Law or the 80-20 rule, which basically believes in like that 20% of like the channels will bring you 80% of the results. And so I truly believe that for almost every Amazon seller, like, or even marketplace seller, Amazon is generating for sure more than 80% of the bottom line. And so in that situation, really double down, focus on one channel and be super, super good at it, and one model and be like exceptionally good at that. And then mistake number six, I would say not hiring an inspection company while in China. I mean, you've seen like, you know, these products that come in with terrible reviews, you know, maybe they broke on the way to the customer. And so that can all be prevented by hiring a good inspection company in China that's going to come in, make sure that the quality is to your standard. But then on top of that, they can do something that's called a drop test, super simple, but you literally just drop the product for a few times from like 30 inches high. So it was like, I don't know, here maybe. And then basically what they're doing is just making sure that from when the product goes from the factory to FBA and then ultimately to the customer, that it's gonna be able to sustain all of that movement and hopefully not break. It's gonna save you a ton of time in terms of not getting those like one and two star reviews later on. So mistake number seven is not finding a mentor. So when we first started out, we actually ended up hiring a coach. We spent thousands of dollars, but it was totally worth it because he told us, you know, how much to order, which of our products, you know, we should really focus on continuing, how to optimize our listings, how to do PPC. Honestly, it was basically a shortcut because if we hadn't worked with him, I'm sure it would have taken us four times longer to learn all of that stuff. And it, it definitely paid itself off within like the first like week or two. Mistake number eight, do not sell like bad products if you're coming too late to the game. So do you guys remember those fidget spinners? Like literally everyone and their mom had one. There's this huge craze that maybe last year or the year before. But now if you check it on Keepa, like I'm sure their sales are pretty abysmal compared to what it was. Or you could also check Google Trends. But I would definitely not join one of those kind of fads if you're coming in too late because you're gonna end up with thousands and thousands of units of inventory and honestly, you're probably just gonna have to donate it or like liquidate it, which is gonna be a huge mess. And then mistake number nine is selling a patented product. I mean, it's a great and easy way to get into legal discussions, spend a ton of money on lawyers. And honestly, probably the worst thing is that it's actually gonna bring you away from running your business because you're gonna have to deal with this kind of legal stuff. I definitely suggest staying away from patented products or if you're really set on doing one, then make sure to hire a really good IP attorney that can help guide you through that process. Okay, mistake number 10. So staying isolated from the Amazon community. So this is a big one that we made. Actually, for the first two years, we didn't associate with anyone in the community. We were really closed off. And then in the third year, we started networking a little bit more. We actually joined a group with about 200 other sellers that were doing all over 1 million a year in terms of revenue on Amazon. And it's actually been one of the best decisions that we've actually made. I mean, we've learned a ton from people in there. You know, sometimes someone's an expert in Amazon, or sorry, on, um, on Facebook ads. And so I can always reach out to them and learn, pick their brain, or someone might have connections into the retail. And then so they can make those introductions. And I mean, honestly, that's how we met Anthony. We actually just came back from Cancun. There was about 70 of us that were there. And it was, it was a blast. I mean, we like networked, we learned a ton. I mean, we're, you know, chilling at the pool, having margaritas. Honestly, I had so much fun. I ended up losing my voice. But yeah, I mean, it's totally worth it. And honestly, you have to really contribute. I think that's one of the big things that if you're kind of always silent, kind of in the background and never say anything, then if you're asking somebody for help, they're way less likely to actually want to help you. Mistake number 11 is not paying attention to dimensions and weight. So like for instance, standard size is 18 by 14 by eight inches pretty straightforward, but for whatever reason, if your product is really close to exceeding one of those sides, 
definitely talk to your manufacturer, make sure that it does not go over or see if you can repackage it. This has happened to us where we're like 0.1 inch over. I mean, it's like tiny, but Amazon is brutal and they're unforgiving and you now have an oversized product. So definitely be really cognizant of that because otherwise you could end up losing thousands of dollars in terms of FBA fees. So what's the easiest way for a supplier to determine whether you're a rookie or an experienced seller? And it's honestly the way that you carry yourself. If you're kind of asking really newbie questions and you're really coming off as an inexperienced seller wanting to order like 50 units, then the supplier is going to know that like chances are you're not going to be successful. So they're going to try to rip you off on that first order because odds are that you're not going to reorder. So that's why I really suggest using templates and really coming off as a bigger player because it's just, you know, in that their culture to kind of take advantage of those kind of newer sellers. So mistake number 13 is only getting one shipping estimate. So if you only have one shipping estimate from one freight forwarder, you have no idea if it's a good price, a bad price. And I see tons of people posting in the Facebook groups all the time, which, you know, is like, it's fine, but like no one knows, you know, what product you're selling and like the dimensions and how many cartons and where it's going. Like that's impossible to ask. So, you know, the better solution is to reach out to five freight forwarders, get quotes, and it's way easier to negotiate based on other people's prices than just kind of shooting in the dark. So mistake number 14 is not using the subject matter fields in the back end. So you can actually put in 50 characters into each line and there's actually five lines. So that's an extra 250 characters on top of your back end keywords. And what's really interesting is, so these are all indexed, but they're not filtered, which is super, super important. So you may or may not, we do basically put it in your competitors' names in the subject matter field because it's not gonna get filtered, but it's gonna help you rank for their names. And the number 15 is not knowing your numbers. We were again guilty of this for maybe the first 18 months where we really focused on top line and everything was growing, uh, but we didn't really focus on our bottom line or what we call a contribution margin, which is everything after all the variable fees. So like, you know, storage costs, BPC spend, referral fees, FPA fees, all that kind of stuff. But I really, really suggest that you really learn those numbers, that you're able to calculate contribution margin really quickly without even thinking about it, because that is gonna be when you really understand your business and you're able to scale much faster. And that's all 15 of the most common mistakes that I see in the Amazon game. If you guys have made one of these mistakes or can relate to one of these stories, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear your story. See you guys soon.